Happy New Year, everyone. What you're about to watch is a condensed version or basically the highlights from the very first stream I had of 2025. For this year, what I'm going to try and do for all my streams is make a highlight or condensed version of the stream and try and keep it under 20 minutes. So if you didn't see the stream live, you can get all of the relevant moments and information in the condensed version. Now, in this stream, I came up with an astrophysics problem to give to a bunch of different AI models. I tested O1, the full O1 model, tested Claude Sonnet 3.5, uh, QVQ, that's Quinn. Uh, I tested DeepSeek, tested Gemini. I think that's pretty much it. And so this is just to test this new strategy I have. And uh, let me know if you like this format. If you like to see more like this, I do want my streams to be a bit more accessible, but obviously they're long. And so if you just don't have time to watch an hour plus long of footage, hopefully these recap videos can help you out. That's all from me. And I hope you enjoyed this I video. I thought tonight what I'd do is talk to you a little bit about a problem that I came up with for AI models to attempt and solve. I've already prompted all the models. I already have all of the results more or less. And so I'm just going to go ahead and just show you the problem. So the problem that I came up with is at the level of this book, An Introduction to Modern Astrophysics, uh, second edition. I'll admit, I did take and modify, take and modify, modify quite a bit, one of the problems in the book. Uh, I'll just read it out here. It says, Supp suppose that there is a pulsar with a period of five milliseconds and a period derivative of 0.1 milliseconds per second at t equals zero seconds. Make the assumption that the product of p dot p remains constant at all times. And it's a four part problem. So the first part is using your knowledge from calculus and differential equations, obtain an expression for the pulsar's period. Uh, part two is using your expression from the first part, determine what p evaluated at 11 seconds is. And then three is to create a plot from uh, of p of t from t equals zero to t equals 1,000 seconds using Python. And then four is uh, imagine a scenario where you have two clocks, a pulsar clock that keeps time by counting the radio pulses received from the pulsar, and a, quote, perfect clock where p dot equals zero that is synchronized synchronized with the pulsar clock. I should have put that there with the pulsar clock when both clocks read zero time. What's going on in this problem? Well, first off, let's talk about what the heck a pulsar is. So a pulsar is what is known as a rotating neutron star. It's an end state of stars. So stars can end their lives in three sort of different ways. Um, you can, they can end up being white dwarfs, they can end up being neutron stars, or they can end up being black holes. So neutron stars is kind of, they're kind of this middle ground between white dwarfs and uh, black holes. They're very dense matter. They're about roughly the size of a city in terms of like a sphere of maybe 10 kilometers um, in radius, but they have the mass of roughly the sun in them. So they're incredibly dense. And pulsars are rotating neutron stars that, I'll, I'll use my dummy earth here as an example with <laughs> the green stream messes it up, but they're rotating and they give off uh, essentially radio waves because they have these strong magnetic um, field lines and they also, well, not just radio waves, but typically we'll, we'll see them in the radio frequencies. They kind of have this sort of swirling lighthouse effect. And so they'll pulse at um, certain uh, frequencies and they have a periodicity to them. Basically, we have this pulsar that we, we just know, for example, that has this period that it, you know, it flickers every five milliseconds and the period derivative is actually changing. So the period of five seconds is not constant. It actually changes. I don't want to get too caught into the details because I know people really want to see the AI uh, solve it. But more or less, you have to set up a differential equation. You go through some steps here where you have to isolate the period as a function of uh, t on one side, as well as the differential um, t on the other side. And using separation of variables, you can uh, get to an expression of p like this. Okay, and so when you get the expression of P, this is sort of the general form on the left-hand side here. Uh, but then if you plug in the numbers that I, I provided in the problem, you should get an expression that looks something like this. So you should get something that looks like T plus 25 to the one half, if you drop all the units, basically. Okay, uh, and then for part two of the problem, you uh, just have to plug in to this formula what uh, T equals 11 is. If you do that, the numbers work it out very nicely. That is on purpose. Uh, it comes out to six milliseconds. So that's uh, that's the, the new period of the pulsar. And then of course, making a, a plot, just plotting this function from uh, zero to a thousand. Uh, this is my code. 
and this is roughly what it should look like. And then uh, the last part is the most tricky part. And the idea here is that you have these two clocks. You have the pulsar clock, and then you have what is known as a perfect clock. And the perfect clock doesn't have a changing period. The perfect clock measures the actual elapsed time that is occurring, whereas the pulsar clock keeps time by measuring the pulses of the pulsar. But the problem is that the pulsar clock is going to be not synchronized in the sense that the pulses, the period of the fluctuations, change over time because it's a function of time, right? And so because of that, the pulsar clock and the perfect clock are not going to be in sync. And so you have to relate the two. And the way that you do that effectively is that there's something that is actually invariant between the two uh, scenarios, and that's the number of pulses. So everyone's going to agree on the number of pulses, but not everyone's going to agree on the time elapsed. The pulsar clock and the perfect clock are related uh, to each other by this expression. You do some calculus, and in the end, uh, I just did Mathematica here because I'm lazy, but at the end, um, you should get that for a minute that passes on the perfect clock, you get about 42 seconds. 42.2 seconds on the pulsar clock. And so let's go ahead and see how all the different AI models did. So for the first AI model, I'm gonna go and pull up ChatGPT um, L1. I actually tested it two different ways. So I tested it by just giving a screenshot of the problem. And I also gave it a um, just a text version of the problem. So I did it two different ways just to give it an idea of how it would do. We, for the first part, the expression should be something like T plus 25. Uh, indeed, it gets that correct. Um, it's kind of hard to see some of the math here, but more or less it gets the final answer right. It gets this expression, it just drops the units. Now, when you evaluate it, you should just get six. Indeed, it gets six, correct. Um, it makes a plot here. And so I've actually gotten all the different LLM models to uh, plot it. And so this is my plot, basically what I was just trying to see what it would look like. If you have milliseconds um, on the y-axis or period on the y-axis, time on the x-axis, yeah, gets right, right? So this is the code it provided in the context window. Spoiler alert, it also did it through text, did it slightly differently, but more or less does it correctly. So that was good. And then the hardest part of the problem, in my opinion, is the last part. For the last part, right, the last part, sure enough, when we get to the bottom here, indeed, it gets the correct answer of 42.2. So O1, through the screenshot, just taking the screenshot, which that actually had a typo in it, gets the correct answer, which is impressive. Quickly going to the version that I just used text with, it will also more or less get the right uh, expression. So here it didn't actually put in the numbers, it just left it in this form, but that's totally fine. If I was grading this, this is, this is totally fine if it left it like that. Uh, evaluating it at t equals 11 seconds, it should get six milliseconds. Indeed, you get six. This code is there. Indeed, has this sort of square root of t behavior, as we should expect. And again, if we go down to the final part, uh, let's see here. So this is, ah, yes, 42.2. So I guess in the final answers, it just didn't really, oh, I guess it left it in this weird uh, form here, but it does get the 42.2, which is the correct answer here. And so before I continue and show you all the other models, I just want to show you or explain to you just how impressive this is to me as someone who, you know, I had to spend about an hour thinking of how to make up this problem, then actually solve the problem, and then just carefully make sure I did everything correct as I expected things to go. And then these models do it in, how, how long did OpenAI take to do this model? A minute and six seconds. And then the one with the screenshot, I think took a little bit longer. I think it, oh, a minute and 56 seconds. So it was like less than two minutes. So hour to an hour and a half of, of thinking of just one problem at this level that is not necessarily hard, but you know, it takes time and effort to type this all up and think about it and plot it all out. And you know, I'm making this problem from scratch. Like I, I know for a fact this problem does not exist anywhere because I came up with it. And yet it's able to get to the right answers, you know, using the correct reasoning. It's not so here's Claude Sonnet 3.5. Again, so we know that the expression should be something like root T plus 25. And this one was with just text. Okay, so we go here with Claude. Claude did it just like almost instantaneously, it's pretty wild. Like Claude did it so quickly and it was right. I mean, right, so like square root of 
sorry, square root of uh, t plus 25 is correct. Six, six milliseconds is correct. The plot, it actually made the plot itself and, and generated its own code, which is pretty cool. Well, wow, actually, I have not really used this uh, before. It was the first time I think I've seen artifacts actually generate its own code. And then it determines the relationship between the pulsar clock and the and the perfect clock which again when the perfect clock moves a minute when the perfect clock measures an actual minute if you're using the, the pulsar uh, pulses to measure time you would have a time of about 42 and 2 tenths seconds indeed uh well okay you get 42 and 1 and 15 but more or less correct so, I also took a look at DeepSeek. DeepSeek, I could only give it the text. I tried to give it a... Oh, maybe I guess I did give it a screenshot. Okay, yeah, so I did give it a screenshot. I think I had trouble giving it the screenshot at the start. It was, like, not loading. So anyways, I gave it a screenshot of the problem again. And um, DeepSeek, I believe, did not actually get it all perfectly correct. So again, you're going to see the same things over and over again. I apologize. All these models pretty much do the first, I think, three parts correctly so again the uh, expression for the period should be root t plus 25 uh, which is which is correct then yes part two is going to be six milliseconds that's correct and then the plotting of the function so this is its code if i went ahead and plotted the code i just copy and pasted it i didn't make any changes uh, deep seeks code is here again has that square root um, behavior again this is not a very complicated code right but at the same time it's like you have to go through all the math and the physics to to get the right expression and then plot it out so i think that's what's really impressive to me when it does all this is that it's none of these things i would say are incredibly difficult inherently on their own but it's putting them all together in context with each other is what i find to be the uh, impressive part but i don't believe it got the next or the final part right yes yeah, so the, the final part, it uh, just did not seem to do a good job on. And I think the, where the models failed the most is when they were doing this integral. So this expression is not correct. It doesn't seem to relate the, the two clocks together very well. Nevertheless, there is something about its mathematics here that I, I cannot fully uh see but there seems to be some there seems to be something off with the way it did this integral it just seems to want to do this integral here one over the period dt but you really actually need to do uh this integral it's missing out this factor of the p naught in the in the numerator i think uh what i wanted to show you next is qwq which is quen with questions i did both quen with questions 32b and also 72b uh, which also uh, did vision. Okay, so QWQ 72B preview. I again just uploaded a screenshot of the problem. Didn't even tell it anything. I just gave it a screenshot and just said, you know, go at it. And what did it come up with? Well, okay. So it's a little bit harder to read than the other ones, but more or less, again, square T plus 25. That's correct. Uh, as we saw, as we see right here, six milliseconds, which we saw right here. Um, the code itself, again, it's not formatted very nicely, and so I had to just, I just copied it and I, I reorganized it in a way that you can actually plot it. So 72, uh, QVQ 72B is here. So I did have to orient it, indent it properly to get it to plot, but sure enough, if you indent it properly, you get the right uh, looking plot. And for the last part, ah, uh, yes, yeah, so it does not get it. <laughs> yeah, so the last part, it does not get it here. And again, it looks like it makes the same... A mistake here where it wants to integrate one over the period but it's missing a factor it's missing a factor of this p naught over uh, p of tdt so yeah it doesn't seem to recognize that this is dimensionally not correct when it does this uh does this integral and because of that it gets an answer that's just completely off and then for 32b uh same thing so let's go through 32b really quickly this is actually interesting because it it actually takes the long way to do this i actually did this this problem the long way myself uh, and so uh, it defines these constants and has to figure out what these constants are at the end in the end though it does figure out uh oh actually oh 
Actually, it did not seem to figure this one out because it's not square rooted, given that. Actually, it's kind of interesting to see how it is uh, checking itself here. Yes, here we go. Yeah, so we got it right here, but it's interesting how here, uh, maybe it's just I can't see the parentheses maybe or the exponent, but so anyways, this, I, I'm guessing it got it right because it did this, but this is just written not correctly. Uh, yeah, it must be because this ends up getting the right answer, six milliseconds there. QPQ32, just using its code that it gave, again, gets this plot here, correct. So anyways, the last part of this problem, again, is the, the trickiest part. And I also don't think it got away. Actually, did it put the factor there? Unless you just factored that incorrectly. Yes, so, but see, it actually even also recognizes it does not get it. It says, wait, that seems too solid. Let's check the units. Wait, I think there's a mistake in the calculation. Let's recast the integral properly. So it's, it's interesting to me how like it even suspects that it's doing the last part incorrectly and that it should be rethinking its approach. Even if it doesn't actually get to the final correct answer, I find that really amazing, honestly, that it's able to backtrack and uh, give it another shot. I did, oh, Gemini, of course. Gemini 2.0 flash thinking experimental. I was using a temperature of 0.6. I was told by someone that like 0.4 to 0.6 is good for math, physics kinds of problems. It, I believe, Got it. So this is, well, this is a little bit excessive here, but yes. So we want to do it in seconds. So yes, it has to factor the 10 to the minus three, uh, six. We got that as correct. Uh, Gemini's plot is unsurprisingly, I think is correct. So this is its plot. Again, get that nice square root of T behavior. This is interesting. It actually is double backing on itself multiple times here. Oh, and pulses is this, uh, and units of pulses are some arbitrary base of pulse rate. Oh my goodness, and it actually got it at the end here. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, so 42.195 again, or 42.2 is the was the answer we were looking for. And I think that's the, the cool part of doing these problems again, like I mentioned before, is that it actually has to quote unquote reason and think and, and deduce the physical relationships to get the right you know, numerical answer in the end. And so, yes, yeah, so it goes this, 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 the plot was good. And then it also got the uh, final answer of 42.2. I wanted to do Claude Sonnet with the screenshot. I, just, I think I didn't do that. So let's go ahead and do that while we're at it because we can, we're, we're here, so might as well. So let's just take a look at how this one does. Okay, so square root 25 is already, we already know that's correct, we know that's correct. Oh, this plot, how is it gonna look? Is it gonna show? Ooh, so this does not get it correct. So sorry, Claude Sonnet. So with Claude Sonnet 3.5 through the screenshot could not get it, but with the text could get it. Uh, really, oh, wait a minute. Oh, actually, sorry, I misspoke. Claude Sonnet 3.5 through the text did not get it. This number looks good, but it's actually completely off by, um, it's not milliseconds, it should be actual seconds, not milli. So I was off there, apologies, I should have seen that. But I just saw that number and it was like, oh wow, I got it, but it was not correct. Uh, thank you so much for watching, if you have watched. Uh, expect uh, more videos kind of like this in the future. I really do want to sort of be able to explain physics, astrophysics, math, but also still do AI testing as well. So hopefully we can find this happy balance and uh, we can all get a little bit smarter because of it. So thank you everyone for watching.